This is something that I've been thinking about for a while, and it really puts the gravy on my biscuits. The current state of multiplayer is an absolute mess. In my last video, I mentioned player responsibility and escalating commitment in modern multiplayer. Today, I want to expand on those topics a little bit, and hopefully in the process, spark some new life into some older multiplayer games that still hold up well today. Before anything else, let's talk about the elephant in the market. Pay-to-win mechanics. How fucking sad does your life have to be to spend real-world money on advantages in video games? You can replace pay-to-win mechanics with cheating software, and the question is equally applicable. I understand, not everyone has the same situation, and some people can't spend the hours it takes to get good at whatever game they're playing. But if you're just that bad, then no amount of pay-to-win stuff will make you good. It'll just give you an unfair advantage over everyone else, which in turn ruins the experience for everyone else. Stuff like this is why so many multiplayer games die off. People who spend money to win ruin the game for players who don't, so those players don't play anymore. And when that happens, the only people left are the players that pay to win, so the advantage that you pay for will then become useless, and in turn, you'll quit playing because you spent money to become better than everyone else, and now that isn't happening and you're back to being shit. Next, battle passes and microtransactions in premium priced games. You know, I don't have any problem with spending money on skins in a free to play game, because that's how free to play games maintain themselves. I have a pretty large collection of Valorant skins, I would be a hypocrite if I said free to play games were doing it wrong. But if a game costs $60, then you really have no excuse for this. Too many people exercise something called escalating commitment with games like this. They purchase the full game, just to realize that a lot of content is locked behind a paywall. Then, they pay through that paywall to get to the content, just to have more content paywalled in the future. The logic is that they've already spent the time and money on the game, so they'll spend more time, and that time will be used as an excuse to spend more money. Think of it like gambling addiction. You just keep sinking coins in because you've been on a losing streak and you're bound to hit a jackpot eventually. When it never happens, the gambler blames the casino for being rigged instead of accepting that they just weren't responsible about it. The last thing I want to do is recommend some old multiplayer games that hold up well today. We've seen something of an exodus in old MP. GameSpy shut down its servers in 2013, a full decade ago, and a lot of great games from that time period still don't have OpenSpy support, so they're still dormant. In recent years, Ubisoft has shuttered the servers to the a lot of their older multiplayer titles, and EA shuttered the servers for the only good Medal of Honor. But those are just a few games in a huge sea. I'll run through a couple that are still online and available for those who are interested. Red Orchestra 2, or Rising Storm, depending on which you prefer, is a massive battle shooter similar to games like Battlefield and Enlisted. The community is incredibly small these days, but there are always servers up and running somewhere. The game itself looks amazing for 2011 and holds up well even by today's standards. There are a ton of community maps, a couple of standalone mods with their own servers, and there are also all of the other Red Orchestra and Rising Storm titles if this one specifically doesn't do it for you. Thug Pro is a highly social and very active multiplayer mod for Tony Hawk's Underground 2 using OpenSpy in place of the old game spy servers. I don't even need to explain this one. If you like the THPS games, this is an obvious recommendation and you probably already play it. It includes a ton of new tech, some implementations from other games, and a collection of maps from the entire series, as well as support for custom maps and full support for parks and custom skaters. This one is a personal favorite. The original Call of Duty can still be played in multiplayer. It's not amazing, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, and the actual amount of servers hosting content is really small, but it's still a fun and functional game. It's a drastically different game from later entries in the series, so approach it like a tactical shooter with a World War II skin. You'll probably have some fun as long as you aren't treating it like a Call of Duty title like you're accustomed to in the modern age. There are also other COD games alive today through X-Labs and Plutonium, so we're not really short for Call of Duty. It would be blasphemy to not mention Castle Miner Z. The game is good if you like block-type survival games. The community is pretty small, but bigger than some others, so you shouldn't have any problem finding a game, and there are also a lot of mods from the dedicated modders over in the Discord servers, so it's not short for content either. Return to Castle Wolfenstein is often hailed as the greatest first-person shooter of all time. I don't share that sentiment, but I get it. If you were growing up when this game came out, or you were an adult when it came out, it probably blew your mind. It's dated now, but it definitely still is a fun game, and the fact that the multiplayer is still so active is a testament to how beloved it actually is. I don't care what anybody tells me, Quake Champions fucking slaps. There's not a single game more high-octane than this. It's so fast-paced that you can can enable an in-game speedometer to measure how fast you're moving. Would it benefit from more maps? Yes, it can get repetitive pretty fast, but there's so much fun that it doesn't really matter. I can hop into a quick game of QC and always have a good time with it, even if I get destroyed by some boomer who's been playing arena shooters since the 90s. Cube 2 Sauerbraten is an open source arena shooter with a very small and very dedicated community behind it. It's also free to play, doesn't have tons of microtransactions, and other derivatives like Arena Cube and Red Eclipse are also available if Sauerbraten just isn't right for you. The best part is, you can build your own derivative of the game because it's open source. 
Finally, for the AIM Labs and Kovax chads, the original Counter-Strike still has a pretty thriving multiplayer community. I don't have first-hand experience with this one. My first CS was Source with a guest pass, and these days I play CSGO, but I've heard really good things and a lot of people have nostalgia for it. I might give it a look one of these days, and I definitely recommend other people go and give it a look also, because it's regarded. It's got a good reputation on its shoulders. Let this video serve as a lesson to you, the player. If you don't want to spend a ton of money in bad modern multiplayer games, then go back and and play something reputable. Play something that you know is good and be a part of the tinder that keeps the fire lit. I would rather play a game like Red Orchestra 2 over any modern title with microtransactions because at least I know what I'm getting. It might be super tiny and the community might not be extremely active, but the game itself is just more raw fun than spending money on an unfinished modern AAA title. Thank you, and have a nice day.